Hello. Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, Dr. Kell. Welcome to your new job. I hope this message finds you in good health. I'm sure you are very aware of your obligations, but in the case that you are not, I may as well reinform you. Within the facility you'll be residing in, there are several tools at your disposal which you'll be using to locate, store, and process anomalous signals. Every morning, you'll receive an email on your company-provided laptop detailing specifically what level of signal you will need to send us. Try to think of it as a quota of sorts. If there are any issues with any of our company satellites, you will need to take the necessary initiative and repair them. Otherwise, you will be reprimanded accordingly. Gather the signals, process them, sell the results to us, and look after the satellites. Got it? Alright, that's it. Good luck. Now that you are familiar with the contractual requirements you'll be expected to fulfill during your time here, let me briefly interrupt by stating, if you are unfamiliar with this game and most of the information surrounding it, I highly suggest you check out my first video on the topic, where I go more into detail introducing and showcasing everything you'll need to know before we dive into this. Okay, let's get started. Right out of the gate, things look jarringly different. Among these changes comes a brand new building in which you'll reside and with a brand new building comes brand new mysteries to uncover. Making your way around the facility, there are a few things of note that should immediately raise some alarm bells. The most obvious of the few are the drawings and carvings scattered across the walls throughout the entire building. As we discussed in the previous video, it can be safely presumed that whoever worked here before you became mentally unwell. And although this is widely undisputed, you never truly find out the exact circumstances regarding your predecessor's disappearance and mental breakdown. That is, at least until you encounter the otherworldly beings that eventually set their sights on you, where you will then truly understand what took place here. On the outside of the facility, you will find two drawings. The first has five of what appears to be the number three written in chalk while the other wall art appears to be a skeletal dog carved into the building. It's easy to presume that this drawing is an observation made by whoever is responsible, as this exact creature can be found roaming the forest, making itself known when you least expect it. Moving on, let's take a look at the inside of the facility, starting with the garage. There are a few things to note. Above the garage door depicts what appears to be three aerial aircraft surrounding some sort of circular shape, which you will later find appears to be a simplistic interpretation of an aerial's face. Before I move on from this drawing, I should briefly mention what an aerial is. These creatures are strange, bipedal, cat-like entities that routinely mess with you throughout your stay here. Either stealing your food when you aren't looking, or scaring you with random noises, aerials are the most encountered of the entities you'll be seeing. And though they may appear hesitant at first to make themselves known, considering their distant interest on day 14, watching you from outside your window, followed up by them immediately disappearing after being caught, it's clear based on this drawing that they have been here before, and are quite familiar with this location in one way or another. The next two markings include the word no, over and over again, while the other is a scribble next to the no smoking symbol, changing it to vaguely resemble the letters OK, but of course, that is just my interpretation. Heading to the vending machine room, we can find another peculiar piece of art which can be found secretly placed underneath a nearby table. This is very clearly a Wendigo, or in-universe, a Furfur. -fur. This creature surprisingly plays a very large role in the non-story aspect of this game. Found in a few events that take place specifically at 3.33am, as well as a jump scare, and found when microwaving an animal skull. As we look at more of these chalk drawings, you will find this Wendigo imagery appears more than once, implying there will eventually be more to investigate about this creature. Although there isn't an ending to this path as of right now, there are many interesting details about Furfur that bring even the facility you're working at into question. But before we get too far off track, above the garage there is a small room with a window facing another window. Interestingly, right below it are what appear to be a pair of eyes. Now usually when I see something this specific next to a window, my first instinct is to presume something will occur when staring for a long enough period of time, but as far as I'm aware, this might not be the case. Now it's time to get to the meat of this section. 
Found within the walls of this facility hides a rather disturbing sight. Six mutilated corpses, surrounded by frantic writing and symbols, scattered across the walls, floor, and ceiling. These writings include more imagery of the Wendigo, the same one from the vending machine room, one with trees growing from its antlers, and also what appears to be a side profile of the Wendigo's head. If you decide to look up, you will also notice a large drawing of an aerial staring at you ominously from above, very clearly represented with the same features found in the drawing from the garage. As for writings you can find, you'll see the words, Wretched Maggots Pluck at the Sky, and Nothing to Lose, Nothing to Know. It isn't confirmed what these phrases mean, so you can only speculate. At least for the first one, it's safe to assume that Wretched Maggots refer to humans on Earth, whereas Pluck at the Sky in the context of the game refers to interfering with ongoings in space, either being space travel or the interception of signals. Aside from the text and strange imagery, there are also numerous symbols that you can find elsewhere in the game, such as tally marks, what appear to be aerial ships pointing towards the center, two strange looking ovals with symbols inside, a triangle surrounded by three circles, a triangle with a line going through it, and something that resembles a sigil. The most frustrating part about finding this specific sigil was that I knew for a fact I had seen it before, but couldn't quite put my finger on it. So, I decided to do some digging, and of course, I found my answer. During my initial playthrough of Voices of the Void, I was trying to encounter everything possible in order to 100% the game in my mind. One of these things I encountered by complete accident. A strange symbol that seemingly only appears at night on one of the 24 satellites at complete random. Now at first, this is where I thought the trail ran cold, until I saw a video posted to YouTube by the graphical asset designer of Voices of the Void, Monique Sanctifier. Within the 2 minutes and 53 seconds of footage, you will see what appears to be an elevator slowly descending into the ground below, all the while 68 different symbols flash on the screen to the tune of Remodeling by Akira Yamaoka. To my surprise, within this video, all of the symbols that can be found around the base are present, but that roughly amounts to 13, so where are the rest? Before touching this point, I want to briefly mention something interesting that can be found within this video specifically that I'm not sure exists in this game. While the video plays, seven sigil-like images will appear on the screen. Most of these to me are incomprehensible, and even while writing this script, I have yet to learn what these are referencing, but two of them are incredibly thought-provoking. Two sigils of demonic entities in the Ars Goetia, Furfur and Stolis. The reason these two stand out the most is quite obvious. Stolis is the company associated with Alpen Signal Observatorium, which manufactures the hardware and technology provided to them. And Furfur being the creature previously thought to be specifically a Wendigo. So, let's imagine there is more to this than just the names being the same. It wouldn't be absurd to imagine then that the company Stolis might be associating themselves very closely with the demonic entity in order to gain something. If this were the case, it would very much explain the 27 rotting corpses found around the base. Not only are there 6 in the room within the walls, but there is one underneath your workstation, another underneath the tree outside, and an astonishing 19 underneath the base itself. All of these corpses, though reused assets, appear to be mangled, with their eyes and brain having been ejected out of their head. And though this may be designed with seriousness not in mind, if you do take it seriously, there is no justifiable reason for this amount of damage to be done unless for some sort of sacrifice, maybe to keep Furfur or Stolis at bay. But obviously, this is of course just food for thought, so with that, let's return to the symbols. As I had mentioned, there are a large majority of the symbols that are unaccounted for. That is, until I remembered a very random and specific event that triggers near the most peculiar spot, in my opinion. The well. For the longest time, I had no idea what the well was used for. When you approach it, you will find wooden boards barricading the opening. Found inside are bones, along with a hook and expectedly some water. Coming here, you may only presume someone was trapped and then perished from starvation. You might not even think twice, grab the hook, and continue going about your day. 
However, if you decide to come back, bringing a sleeping bag, making your way into the well, and taking a nap in this cozy location, this will happen. From here, you will fall into a dark, decrepit looking room, surrounded by nothing but stone and wood, your only source of light being a nearby lighter. Exploring further, you will notice three deer skulls on all four sides of the room. These walls are covered in many of the strange symbols you come across in that video, including a much larger version of the original sigil we found on both the satellite and the wall with the corpses, this time on the ground. Nearby, you will also find someone deceased, their bones being the only thing that remains. Next to them lies a rusty military knife, with the info text reading, an old knife found underground. After observing the direct area, you might naively decide to try and find an exit, but of course, that is futile, as a giant deer skull impossibly blocks the only way out. So, like you may be wondering as well as I, where are we? Before we can reasonably come to some sort of potential conclusion, we have to keep in mind that we are dealing with a demonic entity. If you watched my previous video, you would remember very clearly the previous occupants of the facility made sure to leave a clear warning that specific areas shouldn't be tampered with, specifically the Devil's Plains or Stonehenge. Due to this being the case, it's clear someone understood the true danger of this well, judging by the layered barricade. After you decided to remove the planks of wood, you then found human remains and a hook, alluding to the fact that someone was stuck here even with the proper means of getting out safely. My thoughts are this individual is the same one you find here underground. Since you have to be in a state of sleep before being allowed entry, this might be some sort of mental purgatory where you have no possible escape route. This would easily explain the reasoning behind why they couldn't get out. If they were no longer present in the real world, they had no chance. An interesting similarity between this location and the one from Stonehenge is that after placing Dr. Kell in an impossible to escape situation dealing with supernatural entities, over time your game will crash implying Dr. Kell never makes it out alive. Although this pathway has now concluded, let's wind down on the speculation and showcase some lesser oddities that you can find around the location before closing out the video. Throughout Voices of the Void, among other things, the most obvious aspect of the game is the fact that you are, for the most part, completely alone. So anytime you hear something unexplainable, there is no one you can blame letting your imagination run rampant as to what could have made that noise. So imagine it is late into the night and you're running behind on some signals you need to send off. You must collect the remaining hash codes before you may wrap up. Leaving the confines of the building, you depart to a satellite relatively close to the base until you hear a shocking noise from the distance. Something I learned after finding this is each time you walk into this particular region, the howl sound effect will cycle between a few different variations. And though I'm not entirely sure how many exist, I know for sure there are at least three that I have come across. Considering how strange and creepy the grounds of this location are, it may not surprise you that there is an eerie cave near the satellite Romeo. Previously, this cave was completely inaccessible, but with this new update came the ability to now explore it to your heart's content. Initially heading to the cave, you will find it is blocked off. That is because you will first need to draw out the giant centipede known as Wolfgang. Heading back to base and booting up your company provided laptop, purchase both a hazmat suit and a pumpkin. Before you depart, make sure to bring a pickaxe and an object that produces light. Now bring the pumpkin over to the cave entrance and Wolfgang will come running out. Entering the cave for the first time, you will notice it is both very dark and very treacherous, where throughout most of your stay here, you will be falling over and over and over again. 
As you delve deeper, you will begin to lose your sense of direction, but luckily, something is shining in the distance. Could it be an exit? As you approach, you find that it is just a rock. You inspect the rock and find it's radioactive. Proceeding further, at least you know there might be interesting things down here to find, so maybe it's not for nothing. Pretty soon, you feel a glimmer of hope. Another light in the distance. Something pink glows vibrantly. You proceed, and a pink crystal rests in the cave. Of course, nothing went wrong the last time, so why should it now? You swing, and spontaneously combust. Somehow you manage to extinguish the flames, luckily with your life still intact. You then decide you're going to head back, but first, you decide to take a nap, as you are very drained. However, what you didn't expect during your stay here was for something lurking in the cave to find you. Now, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I know it has been nearly three months since my last upload, and for that, I would like to apologize. Videos will be returning more frequently, as I'm finally getting back into the swing of things, and I'm feeling a lot better. Anyways, I appreciate you for sticking around this long, and I hope to see you in the next one. Now for my favorite part of these videos, thanking the amazing people you see right here on the screen. Thank you to Anita Cube, Coco Loco, Fluffy Guberzak, and Funsum for purchasing the Glono Consumer Membership tier. Thank you.